Hi, everybody. Welcome to the March Pressbooks monthly product update. I'm Steele Wagstaff, the product manager at Pressbooks. And what I want to start today is uh, give an introduction or show you the big changes that we made to the Pressbooks interface in the last month. So you had seen, if you've come to these in the past, you've seen some previews of it, but now it's real, it's live, it's in production, and I'm going to give an overview of the, the, the large scale changes we made for network managers and for general end users. I'm going to log in as a network manager to Pressbooks. So I've just logged in. And as a network manager, the first thing I'm going to see is I'm going to be greeted by a welcome page that's specifically customized for me as a network manager. You'll see here the administer network dashboard has been um, selected. And we have a much more consolidated and compressed set of options for me as a network manager to administer my network. We clarified and kind of simplified things so that instead of having to go to several similar looking dashboards, there's now a single consolidated dashboard, as well as a bright, hopefully cheerful presentation for who you are, what you're doing, and what you might want to do next. So you'll see that there's a welcome page. It's going to give you the name of your network. There's a little block here that will tell you how many books and users you have on your network. And you have the ability here, if you're on a hosted network from Pressbooks, to drill down and view some of these more detailed stats, which would show you users over time, books over time, network storage, revisions over the last several months, and the number of clone books that have been made from your network since the beginning of this year. So that's the first thing you'd see on your dashboard. The other things we're trying to do is kind of help you do common network manager tasks. Specifically thinking about if you're brand new to administering a Pressbooks network, here's the first things that you may want to do. Your network has a home page. Your home page typically will look like this before it's been customized. And so you have the ability to control all of the text and the calls to actions you display here. You have the ability to showcase books on your home page and link to your catalog to customize your menus and your footer. There's quite a lot that you can do to make this network feel like your institution's network. And the way that you do that, I guess, is in this block, we tell you you can customize the appearance of your network. This is a, an option here that will give you all of the controls needed to change that page I just showed you to make it more of what you want. So you can change the title and the tagline. You can add a logo, a site icon. You can change which page you display on the front page of your network, whether it's your home page or any other page that you've created. You can also choose to display showcase books, anything in your catalog you could pick. So I could say, let's add this book as a fifth featured book on my network. And you'll see now uh, it's being showcased here or a third, a third featured book, I apologize. Um, and you can choose to show or hide this feature from your homepage altogether. You can choose to display a contact form. If you do display the contact form, it will show up on the homepage and look kind of like this and will go to whatever email you want to send it to. You can also change, if you have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you can include those links to your institution's social pages there. And you can customize the colors to fit the branding scheme of your organization. Uh, if you want a different header image, for example, like let's say I don't like these peaks, I want to go blue, or I want to put this image, or I want it to look very library-ish, or whatever desired kind of header you want, you can just put the header of your dreams up there and display the header. And then you have the ability to customize the menu items at the top or the bottom of your uh, homepage. And this is where you can add and customize what appears in each of those menus and the locations. Last but not least, there's a couple of widgets that display in the bottom block. You can add some custom text. I'm a header and some body text. And you'll notice as I add this here, it's gonna appear in this footer area. And I could add links, images, whatever I'd like to do to customize that kind of semi footer on my network. There's two blocks there. So if you wanna have content next to each other, you can do that. And you can add custom CSS to change the styling or the appearance of this page if you want to. Use that with caution, obviously. But those are the things that you can do there from that additional or from that starter menu to customize the network appearance. You can also create or edit the content of the pages themselves from this link. This will take you to the pages menu. My homepage could be edited here. 
and all of the tools and skills needed to update this homepage. So if I wanted to say, we're glad to talk you through the many options. I've just made an edit and now my homepage of my network will now say many options instead of options. So if I wanted to see that, I could go view the homepage and see, I now edited the content. So it says many options. You'll also see you have the ability if you're on a hosted network to see the page view analytics for your homepage and other pages. So clicking on this link will show you the Coco Analytics dashboard here. And this shows me how much web traffic my network homepage and other related pages have received over the given time period. You can customize this and show you this for the quarter, the year, whatever you'd like to see. And you can see the most popular page on my home site is my homepage. And my catalog is the second most popular page that it's received this many views. Here's where visitors are coming from. Most people are finding this through Google, some through Bing, from some through Duck. You can see search engines are the biggest referrer for my particular site. And that's what's available there in the dashboard for your homepage tools. Each of these links correspond to some links that you'd see over on the side as well. So you can navigate them from other locations as well. And then you have the big kind of core tools that network managers will use, which are how to administer your network. The first thing you'll see are a bunch of settings. You can get to that here or here. These are all of the choices that you have as a network manager. This will tell you who your network managers are, how to get help or support from Pressbooks, how many people have been using results for LMS if you have that additional add-on. And then you also have a bunch of sensible defaults that you can control and set as a network manager for your network. So upload space, storage size, um, the default language, the default page size for PDF exports, iframes, and whether or not your books will be included or not included in the directory. You also have settings for user book and user registration. These are detailed and explained in the guide. And there's the Google Analytics optional integration. You'll notice, and we mentioned this in a past webinar, but you can use Google Analytics, the old one, or Google Analytics 4. We really do recommend that if you want Google Analytics, you move to GA4 because they're shutting down the old way of doing things uh, in on July 1st. So if you are using them, please transition to the new method before Jan July 1st. So those are the things that are available there from the network settings. If you're hosted with Pressbooks, you also get a really powerful book and user list that let you kind of filter and sort and understand more about the books that are being published on your network. So here down below, you'll see cover, title, last edited, created words, whether or not my book is public and in the catalog, what license, what subject, how many people have the different roles, who the book admins are, the storage size, the language, the theme, and whether results is turned on. You can also filter by a bunch of different things. So I might wanna see who, what are all the public CCBY books on this network? I've got 20 of them. And these are the books I could download it as a CSV and do more analysis on it. I could also say, I wanna see books that have more than 5,000 words. And now I'm down to 16. And I wanna see books that use the Malala or McLuhan theme. And I'm down to 10. So you can mix and match those filters. You can reset them at any time. And you can always download this list as a CSV for further analysis. You can also do things like make public, make private, add to catalog, remove from catalog, add or disallow grading, and delete books in mass, on mass, in bulk from this uh, book administration menu. You have a very similar option for users. So you'll see there's a user list. It allows you to see who's been added since a given date, when they've last logged in, what kind of role they have, or if they have a given role in a certain number of books. So for example, I might wanna see everybody who's a super user of Pressbooks. I wanna see someone who's an administrator in three or more books. And here I've just got 12 users. I could download this list and I could email them and invite them all to a power users training session. I could also say, okay, who hasn't logged in in the last two years? All right, so these eight people, they really haven't logged in for at least two years. I might contact them and make sure they still want their accounts. Or I might just wanna say, you know what, you haven't been for a while, I'm gonna remove you from the network or whatever my policy is for that. So those are those tools you have there for user management. And those are also linked from the administer dashboard page. 
These are the most common tasks that network managers have or want to perform. So we've displayed them there in a prominent place on the dashboard and cleaned up the options over here. Finally, you'll see there's a new support resources block, which points you to places that you can get help as a network manager. So there is a guide I referenced that earlier. If you click this link, you'll see detailed guide documentation for all of the things I just described. So how to administer books, how to administer users, how to customize the appearance, how to create and edit pages, all the things I just mentioned, they have detailed guide chapters that tell you how to do these things in more detail if you wanna read them. There's a community forum that we maintain and host. There is obviously on the community forum, there is a public section where anyone can post and answer questions. And we have a specific group for Pressbooks clients. These are the people that are network managers. And this is a space for you to talk with other network managers. Sometimes the questions you have aren't support questions. They're more questions about how do I do this as a publishing program? How do I do this as a, how do I approach this thing generally? So we want this space to be a place where you can give and receive mutual aid and talk to one another. Um, if you aren't a part of this space and want to be, let us know and we'll happily add you there. Um, and that's a place that you can go to talk with peers. So that's linked here. We also have a series of free webinars that we offer on an ongoing basis. This links to the webinars page on our website and you can see what's coming up in the next few months. So you'll see we've got a getting started session next week, an advanced session the week after, another getting started, another advanced session in May, and there will be occasional kind of one-offs for network managers and other things scheduled in the future. The final thing you'll see is if you are a hosted network with us, we provide premium support to our network managers, and this link will take you directly to just send us an email and file your question or support. So that's the big change we've made for network managers. It's this dashboard and these menu links here. I'm gonna pause and take any questions. Okay, so my big question for you as network managers are, what's missing? Is there anything that you really need or want to have that you don't have now that would make your life as a network manager easier? Do you do think of something later? Please do let us know. Nothing would make me happier than to know that we built something that met your needs. I mean that sincerely. So uh, I'll go back into the screen share and I'll show you a couple other changes that have made that have happened. So this is a change that's not just for network managers. This is a change for all users of Pressbooks. It's this top nav bar here. We have cleaned up and simplified it. If you are a member of a, one or more books, you'll see your books in a list here. And this will take you directly to the dashboard of a book that you are a user in. So then you'll see the dashboard of the book displayed here, and you can do all of the book level things here. You'll see a similar dashboard appears for all users of the book that tells them what they can do and a simplified menu with new icons over here. The changes we made to the top dashboard, we made it larger and a bit more visible, and we added some permanent buttons that you can access anywhere from the, from the Pressbooks interface. Before, it was a little confusing if you wanted to make a new book or clone a book. You didn't always know where to go. So now there is a user dashboard. New users will see this when they log in. They will see a, an invitation to create a book or adapt a book. And they will also see permanent buttons here to create or clone books if they have the permission to do this in the network. Creating a book will just take you to the new book creation page. Cloning a book will take you to our cloning page. And if you hadn't seen before, we've got this new integration here that lets you search the directory. So if I were to search for human rights, I would see publicly available clone books that I could clone. I could select a book for cloning and just clone it directly from the interface there. So hopefully that makes the adapting and cloning experience easier and, and, and more enjoyable. The last thing is if you are a network manager, you will see a button that lets you add users easily. This will just take you to a bulk add new user page where you provide a bunch of emails and they will be added to your network as regular users. This is a new feature. Uh, we had bulk add users at the book level, but we didn't have it at the network level. We added this because networks managers sometimes wanted to add 30 people at once for a training session. And this is a way to just do that in, on mass and send them all email invitations so that when they log in, they would come to see a new page or menu that looks like this. The last thing we've done is we've simplified and kind of combined, changed a little bit of how your profile picture appears. This will show you your Gravatar image if you have one. And there's a link here where you can edit and update your profile. You can add your name. You can add information about yourself. You don't have to add any of this. 
but this will be used in your individual books um, as part of your bio or your profile. So it just saves a, a little bit of time and some steps if you want to be displaying information about yourself elsewhere in the site. So that's uh, wh wh what's happened and changed for the dashboard here. Yeah, um, there's a question in the chat. What happens to the material created by individuals that no longer work at your institution and you want to delete the inactive account? That's a great question. So when people leave your institution, as a network manager, you have total power to remove their accounts, delete their accounts, update their email addresses. However you want to manage those users, that's totally up to you. What will happen is you'll be invited to delete the user. And then when you delete the user, um, their content will remain on the network until and unless you decide to deactivate or delete it. So I'll show you an example of that flow if you want to see it. Would that be helpful, Misty? And I can administer users here. So let's say um, who's someone who hasn't logged in for a long time. All uh, right, Magrete. It's been three years since they've logged in. So I'm going to delete them from my network. It gives you this menu that makes it seem a little bit scary, but we don't actually delete the content, even if you say delete all content. So you can ignore this part. We can probably improve and change that. You could you can choose whatever you want. The book won't actually be deleted, but to be safe, I could say let's attribute all of their content to steal. And I'm going to say confirm deletion. This user has been deleted. So their user is gone from my network. I could add them or sign them up again later, but the books that they created are still there. And if I wanted to delete a book, I'd have to come in here. So I think one of those books was called Liz something. So, okay, here's the Liz demo book. Let's say there's nobody, there's still people left in this book, but I bet I can find a book that has no admin users. So let's find one that has nobody. Okay, this book has nobody in it, this English composition book. So I think it's safe to delete. If I'm not sure I can deactivate it, which means it's only visible to me as a network manager, but it's for all intents and purposes gone. So I can just do this and deactivate it. It's going to ask me, are you sure? And I say, yeah, I, I want to deactivate this book. You'll see it with this kind of red highlighting, which shows me that it's deactivated. I can reactivate it anytime. If I'm really ready to permanently delete it, let's go ahead and permanently delete it. It asks me to confirm and that book is gone. So that's how you can remove users and remove books or content from your network if you want to do that. The second question I saw was, it's interesting that create and clone adapt are featured so prominently on the user dashboard. Yeah, okay, so yeah, Simon, the three most common things that people will do, if they are new users or network managers, they often want to make new books or clone books, and then once they've made a book, this is where usually they're going most often. So we just wanted to make sure like, okay, there's three things you do when you log into Pressbooks. You go to a book and you edit and revise it, you make a new book or you adapt a book. So those three options should be visible and kind of apparent at all times from your dashboard so that you don't have to dig and hunt to find it. We also thought many people were finding they wanted to make a new book or clone a book, but they didn't automatically think to look at my books because they hadn't done it yet. And so that was confusing people and tripping them up. So we'd done a bunch of user research surveys and they said, oh, if you just didn't hide it under my books or my catalog, it'd be more obvious to me where I could do that. So those are the changes we made to support that. Uh, Cheryl asked, do deactivated books count toward the tier pricing totals? I don't know. John, do you know the answer to that? I don't think they do, but John might know. So no, in in our dashboard, um, when a book um, is deactivated, it doesn't. We don't count it in our dashboard. It, it's still on your network, but we don't count it uh, towards the tier. Great, thanks, John and Cheryl. I hope that answered your question. So you don't have to permanently delete if you want to not count it towards the tier limit. You can just deactivate the book. All right, those are the big ones. That's what we spent most of our time working on. There's a handful of assorted bug fixes and other things that we shipped and released. A kind of smaller one, but that you might have noticed, is if you are displaying books in a catalog on your site, give me just a second to show you what I mean by this. Everybody who has a Pressbooks network has the ability to showcase books on their homepage, and we have a new rebuilt catalog where you can display and customize your individual catalog here. Well, there was a bug before where... Um, 
we weren't breaking, we, we were breaking words in weird places. So like this might say non dash T R A D, and then it would just go to the next line with traditional. So we just changed the styling so that words break at a more logical place here. We're not doing a lot of hyphenation, but we're just breaking it so that a word doesn't suddenly break in the middle of the word for these display things. If there are other little tweaks or things that you've noticed about your catalog that aren't working as expected, please let us know. And we're, I mean, this is a relatively new feature and we've tried to catch and fix most of the bugs that we're aware of, but if there are small residual things, please do let us know and we'll fix them as quickly as we can. We have been talking to you in the past several meetings about the question of discoverability. And what we mean by that is when you publish a book, you've made a book public, but attracting people to it or letting them know that this book exists is a different challenge. So there's several things that Pressbooks does or can do to help you achieve your publishing aims. The first thing that we do is we add relevant metadata and microdata in ways that conform with broadly accepted open metadata standards. So we use Dublin Core metadata and schema.org metadata and attach it to the book and chapter level based on what you've provided in your book info page. That really helps for search engines, for Google and anybody else who's looking on the web to say, oh, this book has good metadata and it can be used by search and other kind of providers. Another thing we've done is add the catalog that we give you in the network link so you can showcase your books. A third thing that we do is we collect the open metadata for all open access books and display it in the Pressbooks directory. And we know that there are other places that people want their books to be discovered. So many of you list your books other places. Some of you take them to institutional repositories. Some of you list them in the Open Education Networks library. And uh, there are in the library world, I would say probably two really big discovery service provider companies. There is EBSCO and there is Ex Libris. Both of them maintain large discovery tools and databases that academic libraries frequently subscribe to and provide access to. So over the past several months, we've been talking to both of those companies. And in this last month, we announced a partnership with EBSCO where we are providing metadata from the Pressbooks directory at no cost to EBSCO, and EBSCO is ingesting it into its discovery tools. We described it here on our blog, and you can read more about it there if you like. Basically, what happened was the product manager at EBSCO was a former Pressbooks network manager. She had used Pressbooks. She loved Pressbooks. She was from Mount Hood Community College here in Oregon. And she said, she came to us and said, we have this tool called Faculty Select that's designed to help faculty choose free or low cost material for textbooks in their course. Obviously, for that tool to be more effective, we want as many free and openly licensed books as possible in that. How can we get books in the Pressbooks directory into this discovery tool? And so we had a conversation about that, and it resulted in a, a partnership between our two organizations where we're providing them with regular dumps of the Pressbooks directory metadata, and they have now included it in their discovery tools. The, if you don't want your books to be included in these other discovery tools, then the simple thing is to opt out of inclusion in the directory or to make the book private or those kinds of things. But generally speaking, when people publish a book and make it public with metadata, the idea is that metadata is open and can be consumed hopefully by people who use the interoperable metadata standards. And so we're trying to improve that. The number one piece of feedback I heard from other people is, that's great, but we don't use EBSCO, we use Ex Libris discovery tools, what about that? And so we have been in conversation with Ex Libris. We're talking with them now. Um, I think we would like to explore doing something similar with Ex Libris so that those of you who use Alma or Primo as your discovery tool would have the same opportunity. We're still in early stages there. They were a little bit later to engage with us on that. But a lot of you have talked to them and have talked to us. And so we're trying to do our part there. For those of you on the call who think a lot or care a lot about discoverability, how does that sound to you? Does that, how would that meet your needs? Are there concerns, questions, things that you want or don't want out of those partnerships or discoverability relationships in the future? As a library that has Alma Primo, uh, I'll, I'll just say at the University of Arizona, we would be very interested in this. I think the Ex Libris um, version of Faculty Select is called Leganto, and I know ASU has adopted that, but we have not. So. 
my preference would be that this would be discoverable in Alma Primo rather than Leganto, or maybe in addition to Leganto. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Most everybody we've talked to with Ex Libris has been talking to us about Alma Primo first. So I, I don't know the answer to that. I had my very first conversation with their product owner earlier this week. Things will take a little bit of time to get to like, I'm sure lawyers are going to have to draw up an agreement, even though it's, it's the non-commercial deal, but that's how companies work, I think. So we'll we'll have to work through that and figure out questions about that. Um, Jonathan, EBSCO is a paid service. Is that right? Um, this is discoverability for some folks, but not the open internet. Uh, I think so. I'm not a I'm not the world's expert on EBSCO and their products. EBSCO has the EDS discovery service and they have the faculty select product. I don't know if you have to be an EBSCO subscriber to use faculty select. So, okay, so the librarians are saying yes. So in these particular cases, the people who benefit from inclusion in faculty select are subscribers to faculty select. It doesn't impact, like Pressbook directory is still free and you can still discover it there. This is just the open metadata is flowing into a proprietary discoverability tool. I think that's the case for both Ex Libris and um, EBSCO. Um, I, don't, I don't know the politics of library discoverability and the degree to which there's a open source self-hosted alternative. Um, if there is one and you use it and you want us to send metadata to them, I would have no problem doing that. So far, I've heard. No, they're not paying us. They're not paying us anything. And we're not, this is totally not commercial. So we this is described in our blog, but we're this is open metadata. And our feeling is it should be open metadata. So uh, Nick, I believe so. But that's a uh, my understanding is that going in the EDS, which is the EBSCO discovery service layer, and EBSCO faculty select is probably the primary product that it's or collection is being included in. But those other questions about what EBSCO's, which services and products they're planning to put in, I don't know the specific answer to that. Uh, we could find out or you could ask EBSCO directly. Here's the blog post that I mentioned earlier. That's basically everything I know about it. I'm not, I'm not a lawyer and I don't know the EBSCO product space as well as I know the Pressbooks product space. All right, so that's what I wanted to share with the discoverability and what's coming. Um, Cheryl, thanks for your input about the um, Ex Libris world. Is there anyone else that has feelings or thoughts about ex and a potential Ex Libris partnership or what you would or would not want out of a relationship going forward? Yeah, Liz, thank you. Okay, terrific. All right, so the, the next things I want to kind of give you a, a sense of, I, I gave you a preview of, I think that we're going to be exploring partnerships with other discoverability tools. We really want to be guided by you on this. I have heard from... <laughs> More people, there are more people that said, this is nice EBSCO, but I actually want Ex Libris than I heard saying, yay, <laughs> EBSCO. So I, I, I want to make this a comparison about which vendor or whatever, but what I'm hearing from clients so far is this news sounds really nice, but can I have it for the product that we pay for and we use? So we're trying and we'll do our best there. Um, if you have other questions or objections or concerns or things you want to air with me in private, uh, you, I think you know where to reach me. I'm always willing to listen and discuss that honestly. The other things I think we're, we're thinking about doing are we'd like to build some more analytics and more exportable data for you as network managers. Here's a little bit of what I have in mind, and, and I can kind of show you and talk you through it. And then you can tell me whether that sounds great and what sounds uh, not so great. And if you want to uh, see other things that we're not providing. So what we provide right now for network managers is largely kind of on this stats page. So you'll see here, um, I'll just show you for a sample network, you can see users over time, books over time, revisions made over the last period, network storage and most clone books. The first thing that I'd like to do that I've heard from you is you love these charts, but they're not very shareable with it's leaders at your institution. So what we're considering doing would be, let's say you wanted to show the story of growth from pandemic growth or something like that. We'll say, let's start with January, 2020. So I'm gonna to go to January, 2020 to the present. Here's the story of usage. We started with just six users and here we are at 60. What I wanted, what I'm gonna to like to give you is for each of these visualizations, the download CSV option. So you can download the underlying data and look at it, present it, display it to stakeholders and other people at your institution. 
So we'd like to try to add download CSV buttons for all of the existing graphs and charts. That's one change we want to make based on feedback from you. The other thing that we'd like to do is, as you know, in Pressbooks, you have the analytics, you have these COCO analytics that we provide detailed page view information for your homepage, and each book has its own dashboard. You can get a roll-up view if you use Google Analytics, but we don't give you tools right now to get a roll-up view for everything on your network without visiting the dashboards one by one. That can be a little bit tedious. So our plan is on this, on, let's see, let me go back. On this page, what we'd like to provide for you is a new input where you can put a start date, end date, and there can be a download CSV button. And what it will do is it will download roll-up stats that will include visitors, page views, and book downloads for every book on your network. I'm going to um, show you an example, but I think what I'm gonna do is stop screen sharing before I do so that, um, yeah, great question. So approve it right now, it's just total downloads. Would you want them per format? What would you want? Yeah, okay. So uh, I'll make a note that that's something you're interested in. Uh, Simon, I'm not sure, we don't, we, we don't make delivery date promises, but this is at the top of our backlog and it's something we're planning to work on in our next sprint starting in April. So you'll, you'll if we do make progress on it, have something, hopefully I'll have an update to share at the April product update. And maybe it'll even be production by then, but I can't promise. Just know that it's important to us. I wanna make sure that what we're doing is things that are important to you. I've heard from many people that these are what they want most. Are there other things or ideas that you have that come to mind? Data that would be helpful for you to understand the impact of your publishing program or make a case to people who fund your program that this is working and matters to you. All right, quiet group. So uh, if you do think of something elsewhere and want to share, please do. Uh, I'm always interested to hear that. And the earlier we hear, the better we can plan and build those things. Some other things that are on our kind of future horizon, we want to make improvements to our how we handle math and other scientific notation. In particular, we have a MathJax integration that's a few years old that could use a refresh and an update. There's a set of features related to that that we want to improve, but chief among them is we want to improve support for types of syntax delimiters. Right now, we make people do a little bit of a cumbersome step. If you want the math to be included properly in your export formats, we make you use a custom Pressbook shortcode. Most LaTeX authors aren't accustomed to doing that, don't like doing that, and it's a bit of a find replace mess. So we'd like to fix that as well as make a series of kind of more detailed improvements that will raise Jonathan's eyebrows. I think he's probably the only person on the call that's really deep into this, and I will carry on that conversation outside the call with him. But if you have users that are advanced STEM authors or math writers, please do feel free to put them in touch with me. Um, I'm trying to get a kind of group, advisory group of power math users to make sure that what we build satisfies their needs as we start this work. Uh, and then we also have some improvements to the results for LMS product on the docket. We wanna make sure that it's working reliably and consistently and the user experience is smooth and, and great for everybody. So that's what's coming for us next. Any questions for me about the product or what we're working on and, and why? I want to thank everybody for joining us at the March Pressbooks product update. We'll see you again in April. And until then, thank you for all you do to support publishing at your various institutions and organizations. Talk then.